in the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Matthew. Chapter 6. The Bible tells us there in page 19 to 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in, her, in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. Can you read verse 21? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It is where your treasure is that you shall be pulled. You will give more emphasis to where your treasure is. Now, as for Paul, where actually was his treasure? Where was the treasure of Paul? The Bible lets us know that Paul was a tent maker. In chapter 18 of Acts of Apostles, verse 1 to 3. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them and because he was of the same craft he abode with them and wrought can you read the remaining phrase For by their occupation, they were tent makers. So Paul had a profession. Or learned a profession. He had it, maybe before conversion. Or for purpose of ministry, he learned it. He was a tent maker. See what that tent making, that profession did for Paul. In Acts chapter 20, Acts of Apostles, chapter 20, I read verse 33. To 34, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. He was then vigorously involved in this trade. Enough to, to make it fit himself and not only himself, but 
those that were with him on walk. He had a trade, a profession, and engaged in it so much so that he had enough resources to feed himself and those that walked with him. But see it the other side in First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. But by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Can you read the remaining phrase? Exactly. I read from verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles that I'm not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I but the grace of God which was with me. Can you see this double-edged man prospering wherever he turns to? Prospering wherever he turns to. He majored on both of them and did excellently, but one served the other. One served the other. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. I read verse 5. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? O oh, I only and Barnabas have not we power to forbear walking. Who goeth a warfare at any time? Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planted a vineyard and eaten not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or said not the law the same also, for it is written in the law of Moses. Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that traded out the, the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or said he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written. That he that ploweth shall plow in hope, and he that that he that treasured in hope shall be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so had the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things 
that it should be should be so done unto me for it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory in void for though i preach the gospel i have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me here yeah. woe is unto me if i preach not the gospel for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Amen. You give Peter and others and they eat by the gospel. They have wives and you feed them. Come, is it I and Barnabas because we're not married? That you will not support us? You're supporting others. You're giving to them to enable them preach. Yes, that's what the word of God says. That he that ministers of in the altar should think, eat things of the altar. But it's not so done to me. Well, I, I will preach the gospel because it has been committed unto me. My joy, therefore, is I preach the gospel without pay. Nobody is paying me. And this is the best for me that anybody should abuse my gospel that I preach saying I go about begging for money. That's an abuse. My glory, my joy is I preach the gospel free of charge. Why free of charge? This my hands walk to feed me and to feed those that are in with me so that I preach this gospel free of charge. That means Paul was doing secular work in order to preach the gospel. Why? People had not awakened to support the gospel by him. They were awakened towards other people's ministry. But not towards Paul yet. So he had to labor for himself and for those with him to preach this gospel. Number two. The tent making was for the gospel. Not the gospel for tent making. The tent making was for the gospel. Where was Paul's charge, heart, treasure, preaching the gospel? For woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. This is where my heart is. This is the pain of my heart. I desire Israel to be saved. I desire all men to be saved. That is where I labor. I labor. That is where my heart is. But I do some work too. To help me because the money coming in is too small. To make me travel. To make me do this thing. Help, I mean, feed, sustain, pay salary of those under me. The money is not enough. I must do additional things. For this gospel. Number three. He was humble. The great apostle of miracles. Signs and wonders. Who climb. On top to spread tent for somebody's house. No wonder they looked down upon him. Jesus upgraded that man. The humble man. He was. Humble. Five and number four, committed. 
He had enough discouragement not to go ahead because the money was not coming. Enough discouragement not to go ahead. Money was not coming. People were not responding. But his commitment would not keep him from preaching the gospel. He resorted to the best thing, whatever it is, but as clean and true that would give him money to preach this gospel. He was a selfless man. Definitely was not a proud man. He was not. He was humble. Now, come to the sight of the gospel. He said, I am an apostle. But I cannot compare myself to these other apostles because I was born out of due time. As of my case, I saw Jesus afterward, but I didn't see him practically when he was on earth. I came later, so I respect these people. But for service, I have walked more than them all. I have walked more than each of them. Put them together. I have walked more than all of them joined together. Give a clap offering to Jesus. Amen. To this man, you are asking him for a balance. The gospel will dictate the balance. The gospel will dictate the balance. Because it is the number one thing. It is the number one thing. He needs the money for the gospel, not actually to, to pile the money. Not to accumulate the money. I'm talking about a minister active in service. He needed it for the gospel. I have learned how to abound. I have learned how to suffer want. So, this is he. How then do we speak about your case? You have a profession. Do you also have equivalent vision? There are people the Lord called them to raise money for, for the gospel. Their major assignment is not like Paul. Whose major assignment is to preach the gospel. But their own major assignment is to raise money for the gospel. They can be involved in the gospel. But they cannot take it as high as raising money for the gospel. Now I'm talking about Christians. Not seen as raising money for money's sake. The Lord gave them the calling and they knew it. They supply the money. They supply the money. They must go and be supplying. If occasion arises, they go themselves to also walk. But their side is supplying. Is that your case? Has the Holy Spirit told you so? Or did he say, your side is the gospel. Whatever you are doing, do it for the gospel. Your mind should be on the gospel. Now, suppose yours is on the gospel. And you still have work to do. You know, work, the work you are doing might prosper. Because the Lord has said, whatsoever your hand shall touch, I shall bless it. Many people are not touching anything. So no blessing is following them. Many people are not touching anything. It's like somebody who sat down and said, God, I'm going to preach, but I don't know the topic. Take your Bible. Say, I'm where am I going to open? I said, take your Bible. To open to where? Take your Bible. But you refuse to take your Bible. 
You are thinking and your heart is blood. If you are taking your Bible, the next instruction will come open to this place. But you didn't take your Bible. So, touch something. What will I touch? Touch something. What will I touch? Touch something. The, the least thing that comes to your mind to touch, go and start touching. For whatsoever your heart, your hand shall touch, I will bless. So, go and touch it. Now, in case your business is blossoming, what do you do? If you are not careful, your mind will tilt to the business and the gospel will suffer. What do you do? In Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. The Bible tells us the principal thing. It says in verse 4, get wisdom. Get under, I mean, and forget it not. Neither decline from the weight of my mouth. Verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Ask God, this work, of course it's yielding, but it's overburdening me. I have no time. What do we do? My heart is in the gospel. My mind is in the gospel. To do it myself. I'm seeing a pull towards that direction. But this work is weighing me down. Ask the Lord. He will tell you what to do. He will bring somebody faithful to help you. He will tell you how to distribute the work. How to assign the work. How to lay the work in the hands of someone. Or how you will still have your chance to preach this gospel. God will always give you balance between the work and the preaching. Amen? He gave Paul that wisdom and balance. If he were alive, he would have gone to that direction to tell us how it worked with him. But it was wisdom applied that worked for him. If Paul then did this job of tent making as a gospel preacher who is a more successful preacher than Paul that you have 15 people you're on full time full time means don't do anything sit down there lazy man Rolling from one end of the bed to another. Oh, situation is hard. How will it not be hard? Children are crying. How will they not cry? Sister, can you lend me 5,000? I will give you later. It's a lie. When are you going to give them? When he has told you to lie and now. Because you never re rush up to touch something. You never ask God like Jabez to open your eyes and change your states. You never push yourself forward. You were too proud. This white collar in your neck is a proud thing. Pastor, you are sitting down there looking for car. <laughs> You are preaching now. People should give. People are giving their blood to you. Wow. You are not doing something. Go and do something. Go and do something. And this gospel will prosper in your hand. You are a civil servant. But wisdom profited to that is profitable to direct. 
there's something you can still do. There's something you can still do that will increase the amount of money that comes into your heart. We don't have all the time because we have other messages. But we couldn't slot them in. Remember you are staying till tomorrow. Amen. Of course you have other church to, to go to. But help to tell them that Jesus trapped you in this place. What if you had traveled for Christmas and have not returned? What would they have done? Would they see you in that church tomorrow? You travel to Kuali and you have not returned. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is it. Learn building. Learn carpentry. Add it to you. Add to your faith. A profession. Add to your ministry. A profession. Learn tiling work. Learn electrical work. Learn some handwork. Learn it. Is it not just two years? One year? Learn tailoring. Add tailoring to your life. And see whether you will be, I, you will be suffering for money. When the Lord knows that you have learned this thing because of him, he will come to you. He will bless that work. He will always give chance for you to work for him. He will open the door for your life. Go and learn another thing. Learn. Pray for wisdom. Now, the church cannot pay salary to all these people here. Well, then the church will not move forward. Then you won't have a building like this to sit under. That's why some people must sacrifice. Some people must sacrifice. And the Lord is marking your, sac your sacrifice. And to sacrifice joyfully, do all things without murmuring. Apply wisdom. As I said, we're not teaching all things. Actually, I planned that uh, family planning and bed control should be part of what we should be learning here in this program. But I noticed that I wish we had come from Thursday evening, not Friday, to learn many things. You must regulate the number of children you have as a minister. Otherwise, they will frustrate your life. You, will, you may have to lay away the ministry to face your family. Else, not to fit them makes you worse than an unbeliever in the sight of God. There are many on you, six children. How will you do with them? The school fees of one child can be a hundred and above thousand naira. How do you do it for six children? How do you even do it for four? It's not easy. So, for ministry's sake, even in the number of children, you must make sacrifice, you must control. This because situations are getting more tense. Situations are getting more tense. They must go to school, else they abuse you. They will abuse the church too. They must have good dressing. In fact, they must go to good church, otherwise they abuse your church. Children. So, control the number of children for ministry's sake. I don't know. God has his reason for stopping Paul from having, for marrying Mention has not been made on any of the apostles on children except Philip the evangelist. They had four daughters. Why? None unto God are all his work. There must be some sacrifice in your life in this respect. Yes. We are trying to say some 
tokens could be given to some people who have been able to labor and brought up their chapter, brought up their units to a level financially. From what they are able to gather, give a token to them. The token is small. What does it mean by giving somebody 5,000 5, naira? To do what? For, for one, it cannot even take three days. What about 10,000? It's too small. We wish it more. But the only thing is that the money coming up, even from that unit, it's not even up to that, more than that. Or rather, if you remove 10,000 from it, it cannot sustain the place. So, we must play against wisdom so that the work does not dissolve because of you. That's why we love this tent making ministry. To cause the gospel to run faster. We must teach you this because our conscience is disturbing us. How are you eating? How do you treat your family in case of sickness? How do you treat your children in case of school? Our conscience is disturbing us. We have come to the position where at least the whole church can feed us, can take care of us, but we are not at peace because of you. We are same human beings. What's the joy of being east and you're in burden? Will you not mama? Will you not accuse us and say we are wicked? We are praying for you. We are laboring. We ask God to help us over your case. For our conscience sake. With the coordinators I made announcement. I said. The church will try to give financial help to your wives. Gradually as the money comes. The money of the church is as the water that springs up from the ground. As it springs up, we fetch it. It finishes, we wait for another accumulation. But by that way, we can still be assisting. Take 50,000, can you start something? Take a hundred thousand, can you start something? So that something should be going on to assist your ministry. This we are willing to do because we want to help you as much as you can. And you brethren who have, remember these laborers. They need something. Be giving us something so we can be giving them. Be showing charity to their lives to encourage them in this service. Increase your payment in tithes so that we can remember these people for the gospel of Christ. Know therefore we are not happy that you are in want. We want to improve your situation. Who are committed to this? But then, should we not tell you how you can help yourself? Someone has said, if somebody comes to me to give him money, I'd rather teach him how to get money. Because whatever I give him will finish, he will come again. But if I teach him how to get money, and he learns how to get the money, he won't come again. If you go to learn these things, Add to the ministry. Handwork. By wisdom. Go to God and ask him. How to sustain the ministry. Be humble. Don't think that pastoral work means don't do any work again. Paul did work. Even work for people. Not office job. There wasn't. Because by his nature. He couldn't work in the office. He needed to travel from place to place. He learned rather the trait that will function anywhere. The Lord give you this wisdom. The Lord help us lighten our conscience concerning you by that, by supplying your food, helping your family, and making you to preach this gospel well. 
in Jesus name let's rise up upon our feet and thank the Lord and pray that you will go and apply this you take it to God in prayer otherwise how will righteousness be done you will become liars you will become cheats borrowing money and not paying then you become the wicked that borrow it and pay it not again then the ministry is destroyed it's abused open your mouth and say God help us on this matter help the church help the church on this matter put humility in the ministers men and women let them sell pure water let them sell drinks let them carry shoes about to sell let them learn carpentry let them learn tailoring let them learn electrical job tiling building furniture wall ceramic let them learn to go to farm for themselves and farm for other people so they can get money for this gospel let them do taxi if it is allowed if they have it do it righteously to get money for this job when he calls me I will answer when he calls me. I will answer when he calls me. I will answer. I will be somewhere walking for my God. Hallelujah. I'll be somewhere walking. I will somewhere walking i be somewhere walking for my lord i'll be somewhere walking i'll be somewhere walking i'll be somewhere walking for my lord thank you heavenly father for your world we bless you, we honor you, we thank you. Let it walk in the church. Let it apply to the church. Let these workers be laid by God in wisdom. How to support this ministry. Let them be wise in bed control. So that the children will not overwhelm them. Father, answer their prayers. Direct them to where they can be sustained for this gospel. You directed Elijah to a widow woman, father, so he could eat and continue his ministry. Raise people up to help them. Supply to the church so we can also help them. Jesus, thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray.